Hey everybody, it's Valen from Mischief of Mice, here with another bit by bit on witchery. Today, we're going to be covering the magic mirror. That's right. This here has lots of purposes, including some danger. Thus why I'm still armored up, just like I was in last episode. Not that it's actually going to help me at all, but we'll see what we can do. So, first and foremost, how do you make one of these things? Well, let's get over to our circle magic area and get to it. All right, here we are at the circle magic area that I've got set up already. I have our uh, demon friend here joining us, and I am in a creative mode, so he uh, therefore is not attacking me. Obviously, you will need to take different precautions in order to arrange this. But let's take a look in the book. It says here, to trap a demon into a mirror, the rite of infusion on page 68. It is a middle size white circle, and you will need a brew of hollow tears, gold ingot, glass pane, a demon within the circle, and an altar power of 2,000. Now, this, oop, there we go, brew of hollow tears actually has a bit of a recipe to it. In order to get one, you will need to have a brew of flowing spirit and oil of vitriol in a distillery to get that. And you'll get a whole bunch of them, too. So to get that, you'll need to make in a kettle, Spanish moss, fanciful thread, water artichoke globe, glint weed, wool bat, mandrake root, and you'll get three of those. Now, to get fanciful thread, you'll need some wispy cotton, which is gotten from the dream realm. And I'm not going into that today. Womp womp. So, uh, but we are going to progress anyway, because why not? This is fun, and I like this. Uh, so, to do this, we've got all the ingredients here. Let me just put that down. And you need a glass pane, gold brick. I've got an altar nearby, right over there. And press the button. And what we're doing is essentially trapping that demon in a mirror. And there you go. Now, a mirror, as I have here, and over there, and everywhere, uh, it actually works with um, only on the upper half of two blocks that are on top of each other. So if I try placing it here, nothing happens. If I place it there, it will work. So let me change my game mode, or else it won't use the mirror up. And there we go. It is now in place. Now, how does this work? Well, uh, usually it's best to have one within range of an altar, just so that uh, any of the functions that you do use end up, uh, well, doing everything that you want it to do. So, to start off with, the first one that you spawn is inhabited, because you just put a demon in that mirror. Now, if you right-click it, it will say, mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest one of all? And then it says, in all the world I cannot see one that is more fair than thee. Furthermore, other than thee, no others have stood before me. So, what does that mean? Well, essentially, if there are other players in the world, or even other uh, villagers nearby, may end up being the fairest in the land. Therefore, that uh, player or NPC will have a golden heart. You can then harvest that person, probably with your Arthana, uh, to get such an item, which is not going to be covered today. But um, that is what that stands for. The uh, other part, it tells you if anybody else has used this mirror and uh, has looked in and asked the same question. Therefore, if you are the uh, the fairest of them all, um, you know that you might be in trouble if someone else looked into your mirror to find this information out. Now, you notice that there was a little face popped up. Here we go. He looks at you and tells you that. And, uh, oops. and uh, what this means is that this mirror is still inhabited. Now, things you can do while it's inhabited. You can grab one of these here quartz spheres, which if you don't know how to make one of those, it's pretty basic. You need a block of quartz, regular nether quartz, and glass will make you one of those quartz spheres. A little expensive, but I mean, you just got to do a bit of harvesting in the nether. Um, and then you take one of those, and you right-click it on the mirror, hopefully without getting too close. You notice I am not closer than here, because if you get too close to one of these uh, inhabited mirrors, well, just any of the mirrors, you might get sucked in. But, let's use it. And there we go. I now have a duplication grenade. 
Now what do these do? These, my friend, are very cool. You toss one out, and any enemies that may be near you, it will automatically aggro all enemies onto that result. Here, I'm going to use one. That's right. That's me. And I can actually hurt me. But it's just as if the representation was you. You know, he's got gold or er, diamond armor, enchanted, all sorts of stuff. He was holding the item when it landed. Now I'm going to change my game mode here so that I don't run out of this item. But if I switch quickly to another item, when it spawns, he'll have that item in his hand. And you get the uh, quartz sphere back. So you can actually get a whole lot of these just by clicking on there. And it may require some altar power. See, it's not working on one of these because those are uninhabited, which I'll go over in a moment. But they only last for about, uh, I don't know, 5-10 seconds. And you can spawn a whole bunch of them. OMG. And <laughs> really have a lot of fun with it. But um, it's just replenishable. So I do recommend if you're going to keep one of these, if anything, just for that effect, you put yourself a fence around it so you don't get sucked into the mirror. Now what else can you do? You can use, come here, a tag lock kit, which I've already got some in my inventory. Here we go. Uh, you use a tag lock kit in there, and you can turn yourself, uh, well, you use it on the mirror just like you did with your uh, quartz sphere, and you can turn yourself into another character. So if this tag lock kit is uh, for another player, you can then turn into that other player and make yourself look like them pretty cool. You, you can transform back by doing similar things uh, like uh, transformations or uh, even tag locking and so on. But just so that you know that it's available. I don't have any other players on this uh, uh, server, but um, I was just letting you know that it's there. So, the dangers of the mirror. As I was saying, it's getting a little too close. Now, if the mirror is inhabited, you go inside, you go into another world. The world of what I call Dire Wolf 20, because you'll be in a 9x9x9 nine by nine by nine room. And you will see your own reflection. That demon inside the mirror has taken on your reflection and will carry one of your weapons uh, wearing your armor. So if I take off my armor, you'll see he takes his armor off. And he'll choose the preferred weapon of whatever he likes uh, that you have. I don't know if it's on your hotbar or just in your inventory. But either way, you'll notice he's got 100 health, which is 50 hearts. That's quite a lot. Now, if I hit him, you see, it, it only took away 6 hearts, or 6 uh, health. Now, let's say I equip my enchanted diamond armor. Well, if I try hitting him now... I'm hitting him with uh, Sharpness 5 and Diamond Armor. These guys have their own armor built into them, so they are really dangerous. Now, let me fix this wall here. This room may be a bit dark, so let me uh, light it up here. Let me get some torches. And we will continue with the next part. Now, you can actually get back through this portal. Now, you notice it's not at my height, so I'm just going to do a little jump, and I'm back. You might hear a chest noise and water splash. That's normal, uh, but we're going to try and fight this guy, because if you go through in a traditional game mode, make sure you've got some food, then he is going to be very upset with you, because you encased him in here. So you see here, he actually will slow down and stop for little bits. You might have to, there we go, fight him every now and then, and he'll end up getting a, a frozen effect, but if you're too close, he will start attacking you. If you're just outside of his range, then he will not. So it takes a while to get him down, and you'll want to make sure that you've got the food so that you can regen your health or whatever potions you might want. But anyway, enough of this. Let's see if I can ah, get out of here. Stop that. Yeah, he, he ends up putting a debuff of slowness on you as well, so that doesn't really help much. <laughs> Alright, that's enough. So, what happens once it's uninhabited? Well, if you kill the guy, he may drop some items. Let me make it daytime quick. And uh, those items could be of use to you. He, he is a demon after all. But you'll also have a mirror, which will then say, 
it is uh, uninhabited. Let's see if I can actually grab one of these. Oops. Oh, there they are. Get rid of that one. It says here, hollow. So, And this one says, inhabited. Therefore, the demon that was in here, I defeated. And by doing so, if you place these in a certain way, you can use them as uh, quick transportation portals. So, and uh, they only work about 16 blocks apart or less. But if you notice, I have one here. And about 16 blocks away, I have one on the other side. Essentially, if I walk into this mirror, I will walk out the other instead of going into that little uh, alternate dimension. And I can do it and go back. Just like that. Pretty cool. I like it a lot. So you can also use this on a vertical plane, but it's not on the opposite side of the block. It's on the same face. So I've got one here. And I've got one up on top of that platform. So if I walk in, I'm going to walk back out of that same platform. So you can see here, I am straight above. Pretty darn neat. Now, alternate to that, if you just use the singular mirror, just the one. Now, I'm still in creative, but if you kill the demon that's in there, uh, you can actually use it as your own storage. For instance, a direwolf 20... 9 by 9 area. Of course, this guy's still in here, but I mean, it will actually retain the items that you put in it. For instance, I had all this set up. Hi, how you doing? So you can actually then take the mirror off the wall, place it down elsewhere, and you've got yourself kind of a portable room uh, and or base if you like. So uh, it's pretty darn cool. Uh, I like it quite a bit. Um, and that's about it. So I uh, hope you guys liked the video today. If so, please give me a like, comment, or subscribe. And until next time, see ya.